Um, I'm also an IVF baby, um, and so it's, it's a great honour to meet you. Um, I wondered whether you could talk a little bit about um, why there's been no um, move in terms of getting IVF treatment to be more efficient or more reliable. Oh, um, gosh. Whether that's, yeah. whether that's in any way attributable yeah. to the fact that the breakthrough um, initially was so huge um, that it related to what you were saying about um, scientists? No, I, I, you know what? I think it's a matter of shame, really. Um, I think the reason why IVF has not improved, and you're quite right to raise that issue, um, it hasn't really improved since I, certainly since I retired, and probably before that. I mean, the success rate in Britain over the last 15 years has improved by about 2%. That's all. And although, if you look at world figures, it seems much higher, that's because people doctor the way they present their figures. So they'll, look, they'll, they'll ignore cancel cycles, they'll look at putting too many embryos back, there are a whole range of tricks or limiting the treatment to people who are more likely to be fertile and so on. Now, I think it's a massive problem, and I think, actually, it's a very important question you're asking, and it's one that you may know that I've been campaigning about very vigorously for some time. Sadly, in vitro fertilization has become a marketplace. It's now highly commercial. People who are doing in vitro fertilization are making massive sums because people are so desperate to get pregnant because it's such a damaging situation for them that actually they're prepared to pay anything in the hope that this new treatment that they're being offered by that particular clinic might help them. And most of these new treatments are not validated. So, for example, they're using the technique of embryo biopsy, the one that we, that we started, not to look for a genetic disease where it works, but to look for genetic influences which might improve the viability of the embryo, which clearly does not work. And meta-analysis shows that if you biopsy the embryo under those circumstances, you probably reduce the pregnancy rate. But that does not stop the clinic selling it for an extra £5,000. Now, I deprecate that. I mean, I... I feel that it started to go wrong from the very beginning. Unfortunately, my colleague Stepton Edwards did not get the public funding they thought they would get. They took a decision to form a private clinic, which I think was a pity. I wish they hadn't, because it was a role model. Um, at the Hammersmith end, we continued on an entirely non-profit basis, and that was so until I retired. It was never a profit-making clinic, but now, IVF clinics are being sold for four hundred million pounds in London. I mean, four hundred million pounds, and the treat, and the you know all the equipment's probably worth about a million and a half. You know, add in you know the, your clientele and your rates and your you know and the cost of the Harley Street house, and you're still looking at less than ten million pounds. So, unfortunately, the combination of desperation and avarice has meant that very good young people who are very bright are not unreasonably tempted into private practice. And the problem with that, and I have no problem about private practice, the trouble really is that more and more, of course, the pressure is to continue to do that practice at the exclusion of academic medicine. And I very much worry about that. Um, I, I don't want to mention other cities, um, but I could talk in some detail about a number of cities around Britain where I think the private initiative has gone much too far. And I think that why this is so important is because this is a model for the whole health service. You know, the 2012 Health Act, Health and Social Care Act, um, actually allows that situation to occur more and more readily. Now, unfortunately, um, there is hardly a, a jurisdiction around the world where, in fact, IVF has not been absolutely dominated by the private sector. Um, and it's interesting where it has not been have been quite major advances. So in Scandinavia and in Belgium, um, where there have been very sensible arrangements at limiting the fees, uh, to some extent in Israel, um, there have been continued to be advances which look quite interesting. But I think it's very sad that probably the two most advanced medical cultures, America, and the United Kingdom, where in fact, you know, we probably have some of the best medical scientists, are actually really, in fact, diverted from, from, and I think, you know, your question raises very interesting questions, answers. For one thing, why do we use the hormone therapy that we've used ever since we started at, at Hammersmith? That hormone therapy was something we, which we, but nobody's rethought really it. Nowadays, we're still giving that hormone therapy, which I know is a huge overdose 
of follicle stimulating hormones, unnecessary. And we should be thinking about that again because we know that that actually causes abnormalities in the embryos, which means that you get fewer embryos which are going to be viable. And I think that that's very sad that nobody's not rethought that. Um, the licensing authority doesn't help. I'm not doing clinical IVF, but I'm still interested in the research. In my lab, we're looking at phenomes at the moment, the sort of chemicals which are released by the embryo during its met met metabolism. So we're not invading it with a biopsy. We're just looking at what it's producing in the culture media. And of course, using, you know, using modern spectroscopy, you can, use, you can identify tiny amounts of a molecule. Um, and, and do you think it's been easy for us to get a license to do that? We are testing the fluid which will be thrown away. So it's of no use to anybody. That's the spent culture medium. And we've been fighting the Human Fertilization Embryology Authority, which will give license to a private clinic to do unvalidated experiments on patients, which have not been proved to be of value, but will not give us a license for what is a completely harmless intervention. So the bureaucracy which surrounds this treatment is not helpful.